Vintage.com. Hey everyone, welcome back to Vintage Super League. I'm Eric Rolick and I'm joined by Stephen Menendian. How are you, Steve? Good, how are you doing, man? I'm hanging in there, uh, watching a, a lot of vintage, some pretty interesting matches. Uh, have you gotten a chance to watch any of this action so far? I've jumped in and out. It's uh, the, Boy, the Rich Shea match was incredible. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that one definitely played out interestingly, to say the least. <laughs> Rich drew a string of single pins to dig him out of some of those tight spots. Yeah, definitely looked like Chris was pretty far ahead there for a while. Uh, our commentators noted that Rich's chances to win were slim to none, but uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Dragon Lords uh, carried the way, as they're meant to do. Yeah, you don't see those very often in vintage. Have you ever, have you ever seen those vintage match? <laughs> Just because I played Rich Shea in the finals of the, the last big vintage tournament on Magic Online, that I get to see uh, Dragon Lord Jamoka, but it wasn't very relevant in that particular match. <laughs> so, so, so our listeners know what you're talking about. Eric Froelich uh, won the last major vintage Magic, what is it, Power 9 Challenge from November. And there were, what, like 93 players. And Eric just crushed the field. Uh, I, every time I was looking at the uh, results, you were one of the first matches done. <laughs> yeah, I didn't go to game three very often, let's put it that way. <laughs> and so so people know you played, uh, played combo. Yeah, I played a Storm deck, and most games ended on turn two. So it, it worked oh. out pretty nicely for me. I had a lot of good draws, and <laughs> it didn't involve playing too much, I guess. And So uh, a lot of quick matches there, and my match against Rich Shea ended up being pretty interesting in the end, despite kind of a, a bit of a bloodbath where I was able to get down Necropotence pretty early against him both games, but he, he was able to fight back a little bit despite not having a lot of interaction. <laughs> it was definitely a fun match for sure. Yeah, he's got his own Necropotence, just not quite as good. Just yeah, he, that card is pretty good if you're able to get it down, especially on turn one, but he didn't actually draw it so which is nice. He's drawing so, it, you know, Hard to turn against a deck that can't put any clock on you besides just killing you is is pretty good. So uh, definitely just, was a fun match and a, and a fun tournament. So folks know what we're talking about uh, Rich Shea's Necropotence. If you if you didn't catch it or if you did, is Sylvan Library, which is one of the original Necropotence. I guess Greed would be the original Necropotence, but Sylvan Library is certainly an analog. Um, and in in the match that Rich played against uh, uh, Rich played against Pula. He had an early Sylvan Library that actually kind of did everything it needed him to do. I mean, I think it won him the game, although it looked, it didn't look like it might might have been able to do that when he played it. I don't know what you're thinking. When you cast that. Yeah, I mean, it got, it got him uh, where he needed to be. It involved drawing a bunch of perfect restricted cards, <laughs> but uh, that's why he played vintage. Well, it, at one point, so the. the Got like three or four turns post open library, and it was going, I think, like two cards, or at least the first two cards, and it wasn't that great. But then the final, the final turn that mattered, the Sylvan Library revealed Dak Faden, which was able to seal the deal. Yeah, the, the Dak Faden definitely was a nail in the coffin. Although all, all the draws up to it is what turned the game from Rich being a, a huge underdog to a pretty massive favorite. He, he didn't actually need to draw Dak Faden. To, to win that game, yeah. although that ensured that he won it that turn. And just, and yeah. I, mean, well, I think at one point, Sylvan Library revealed two Ancient Grudge. <laughs> and then and then certainly, I think he, he saw like Treasure Cruise and Ancestral. Uh, yeah, I think it was Ancestral into Cruise into Time Walk into finding double Ancient Grudges. Yeah, that was that's pretty tough to come back from for any deck, let alone a deck that relies on its artifacts to win. Yeah, he had gushed that he didn't even use that turn either. Used it, I think, the, the post time walk turn or the time walk turn. Pretty incredible. Yep. So, so, up next, we have a pair of Hall of Famers. It's going to be Randy Bueller versus Luis Scott Vargas. Um, yeah, you guys have put up some pretty good results there. You know, we've got you and I are our champions of Vintage Super League. Randy, the third one for, for the short season. Um, Luis has made the playoffs in both of the long seasons, so putting up some pretty consistent results before taking his, his turn on the workshop train and uh, O2-ing in the the double elimination racket. So what, what do you think these two might be bringing to the table? 
Well, I think the first question is the next level question, which is who are they playing in, in the entire trimester? Uh, and I'm not sure what the answer to that is. I think, I think one of my opponents is playing LSB. I think Tom plays LSB. But LSB in general, I think, has a pension for these, uh, these Grixis type decks. I saw he played it in the daily the other day. You know, like the Notion Thief, Time Vault, you know, control decks. He seems to enjoy those. Those are definitely decks that he would enjoy playing. Uh, what about Randy? Uh, you know, Randy seemed to do pretty well with Doomsday in the in the Power Nine Open. So I'm going to put him on Doomsday, but I wouldn't put him past you know a number of things. He's he's played Merfolk, Delver, and Belcher in the past, but I think he's going to go with Doomsday. Yeah. What do you think? I think that Luis is going to try to prove himself with the shops, and uh, and Randy, yeah, he's got a pretty wide range of various blue decks. So definitely uh, Doomsday would be towards the top of the list of things that I would expect to put him on, but. I don't know. He he likes to cast ancestral recall. So we got to make we got to make a prediction of, of what Randy's playing. Yeah. I, I my first choice would be Doomsday, but it wouldn't surprise me to see him on something like Storm if he's had a chance to practice because he he did play a lot of that live a couple years ago. He was playing uh, and he in the very first VSL he was playing the Gristlebrand Oath deck. So Storm is very good right now. It wouldn't surprise me to see him on a deck like that, but definitely putting him on blue cards. Merfolk wouldn't be that surprising either. That's a it's a pretty sweet deck. Yeah. Randy enjoys playing with cards like Necropotence. So I agree with you there. But, <laughs> yes, but he can still play with that. He can still play with that in Doomsday. So. Is the match ready? All right, we're going to send you down to the match now. Welcome back. Here we are at Vintage Super League, round four, pair of Hall of Famers. Randy Bueller on the bottom on what looked like Dredge. <laughs> this is not a <laughs> not a range of, uh, of decks we put Randy on. And Luis? Is, is he Luis on just top? divination in his opening hand. No big surprise there. <laughs> Covering up Mistress Workshop. So Luis looks like a, just a regular... Uh, Workshop deck, although we can see in the deck title we have Uba stacks. Nice. So uh, uh, that means that what is the what is he playing? It's U Uba mask and Bazaar Baghdad the combo. If he's, he's probably playing that, so yes. that will be really exciting to see. And that's that's pretty. Uba, Uba mask is pretty. Well, here we go. Randy has already mulliganed to four, so the dredge curse continues. <laughs> <laughs> I know, Eric, I know you don't believe in the dredge curse, but that's pretty miserable. Randy's... Randy's I just received a text from Luis saying, oh god, Randy is on dredge. <laughs> Randy is mulligan to one. So, so just well, so he gets a scry. Yeah, he, he gets a scry. It's, all, it's okay. <laughs> Listen, I've played dredge against Luis too. I had what we deemed about a 99% to 1 matchup where he had no hate cards. <laughs> and I had to mulligan to zero every game. And so I that's lost when, to Luis. That's when Luis was playing the, that uh, the uh, Pyromancer Burn Willows deck, right? With Punishing Fire? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> fire against Dredge. <laughs> no clock, no interaction, no anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So just so folks know, the math on Dredge being able to find a bizarre Baghdad with serum powder and with full mulligans is around 93%. Might be higher now with the mul with the new mulligan rule. So once again, I well, think it's not going to change what it actually is of being in your opening hand. It's just right. what your odds right. of having in turn one are. That being right. said, it's actually some people have run the numbers. The odds of having a bizarre in your opening hand before mulling to one on Magic Online is 50%. So. <laughs> We have seen things kind of pan out almost exactly as you would expect. It's been about five out of twelve games that someone has been able to find a bizarre before mulliganing to zero. Well, that was a so good the, the math is checked out. Okay. <laughs> well, there is one other thing to add to that, which is I think in season two of the Vintage Super League, Dredge combined for a total score of zero and ten. If I'm not mistaken, and that included your match in one of the last trimesters. So yeah, but but Bob. Uh, but did start three zero in season one. Yeah, t in season one, Tom Martell I think won a match with it. You said in season three, it went three zero with it. Okay, 
Yeah, but in it season had, two, had a solid start. That's why people went back to it in season two. But, <laughs> so the cards are a little small for me to see. We saw it loose instantly <laughs> in five cards. The bottom one is certainly Grafticker's Cage, but I can't tell what the rest are. So I'm gonna yeah, I see. It looks like Randy. It looks like Randy is running the full Leyline package. So he's got Leyline of Sanctity, which is good against both the Druids. It's good against um, Tendril decks. Uh, and he's got Leyline of the Voids. So it looks like he his plan is just kind of, what, assume that if people aren't running hate? Yeah. And, wow. There's so many different interesting dredge decks out there right now. Some people play these, I don't know if you've seen these, like, pitch dredge decks that have, like, the, the twelve 8 to 12 counter spells, and then some of them have Thespian Stage. So they sideboard into it, or they have some of the combo components main deck. Uh, I, I've seen a little bit of it. I actually thought about it some because I saw Rich Chase streaming with that deck earlier this week. And I'm like, eh. Rich has evolved greatly in this league yeah. from week one. We're like, okay, he's Control playing, flip. you know, Dak Fade and Goblin Welder 100%. Yeah. That's the deck he's playing. <laughs> week, you know, the second trimester of week one, he's probably playing Dak Fade and Goblin Welder. <laughs> By the third trimester, <laughs> yeah. like, yeah, he might play another blue deck. Now we're at the point where, you know, he, he's could play a lot of different things. It's so true. In season one, he was just locked into playing Control Slaver every week. <laughs> and then he and then he jumped under the, uh, the Delver train. And yeah, he got locked on Delver Cruise for a while. Yeah, exactly. But now he, he, he I mean, he did very well in the championship with Workshop by that. Okay, now let's skip the blue decks. He's got Workshop. So. There, there's the, uh, the Upa Mask combo right there. Of course, he doesn't have the mana to cast it. Unless well, both players have Bazaar in their opening hand. Right. Probably uh, important for Randy. One of the open questions that I should have checked is often Uba stacks will, will Wow. Slash. You see that off the top? Nice. Oh, he, did he already have a Wasteland? I, I yeah. Was, what's the, what's the artifact next to the Uba mask? I can't quite tell what that is. Uh, that's, um, he's got a Thorn on one side and just a Buried Ruin on the other. That's a Buried Ruin, so that's a land. Mm -hmm. Uh... Sometimes the Uba Mask decks run Goblin Welder, which is really nifty with uh, Uba Mask because you can actually lock your opponent from ever drawing anything. Uba Mask combo with Bazaar. And then Bazaar is just an additional draw engine because with Bazaar, the cards are removed with the Uba Mask trigger, so you can, it's essentially, you know, negates the drawback to Bazaar once you've emptied your hand. You're drawing three cards a turn with the Uba Mask. Of course, this isn't the matchup where that's going to shine. Although it can be pretty disruptive to the dredge player, if, if uh, you know, I'm not actually sure how dredge works with the uh, Uber Mask. I assume the replacement places the draw, so Uber Mask will never trigger. Yeah, I, I think you just don't draw, but I'm not 100 percent on that. Yeah. So this game is actually going to play out interesting. We just didn't draw any of his big sideboard cards, but he did have ways to destroy Bazaar. He's got, you know, a way to get down some of his artifacts a little bit quickly. He's got another strip mine in reserve. And Randy didn't hit much off the first dredge, although there is another Grave Troll in the in the graveyard ready to go. So this game's going to be interesting. Therapy is going to blind name Grafdigger's Cage. Makes a lot of sense, but it's going to whiff. Um, that's a card Luis definitely wants to see. Having access to Bazaar gives, gives you a lot of extra hits to just find Grafdigger's Cage. Like, you're fine even just discarding without the combo to to find the card that's going to be key for interaction. Uh, getting Thorn down is going to be nice to try to turn off the Serenity. Definitely. Yeah, the, the, I mean, I, can Riftstone Portal actually tap for mana? Isn't that the other land in his hand? I'm not sure. I think it can. I, I, I know it what it does when it's in the graveyard, but I don't know what yes. it does when it's in play. I think it taps for colorless, but okay. make Riftstone the far left card big. So he, Randy's hand? I guess we can't do hands. That's only cards in play that we can actually make big, but it does add a colorless to your hand. Colorless. That'll be of some help. Uh, but Riftstone Portal, of course, does much more than it's in the graveyard. Um, it looks like, you I mean, Randy is just, he just needs to get that grave troll into the graveyard. And th how many dredgers does he actually have in his graveyard, graveyard right now? Um, well, he discarded the other grave troll. It doesn't look like he hit anything else. So he's going to, oh, did he, he didn't even dredge in his up, oh yeah, because he's going to, is he dredging now? Yes, he did. He just hit a narco. Um, interesting, Luis decides to strip mine the undiscovered paradise rather than getting out a thorn or something like that. I don't really know why Luis has no rod in his deck. Well, the thing here is he can flash back the Cabal Therapy and take out the thorns right now. <clears throat> so well, he couldn't... Oh, I see what you're saying. 
He's got the uh, he's if got he the nar- played a thorn. He wouldn't really care, right? But now, yeah, I think I think Luis just misclicked during sideboarding to have no rod still in his deck. That card <laughs> does legitimately nothing. Nothing. But it does have a good way to discard it. Yeah, it right, only interests so. him at this point. He's got more wasteland. But he just needs to get into a position where he can get his draw engine online and begin trying to lock this game up. Yeah, I mean, it, or just find a graphic stage. Yeah. I think that's first and foremost what he's hoping for here. Well, he discarded the mask. And the null rod, of course. Yes. Well, the null rod is only impacts him, so not the best. It's worse than a do nothing. Yeah, it is actively a negative. <laughs> I wonder what Randy's thinking when when Luis discards no raw. Like, what does he think I have? <laughs> I guess he could have like black lotus or something. Yeah, that really does anything in the dredge deck? I guess if you have serenity, that's nice that you could get it out there. But right, accelerate out your serenity. Yeah, certainly not something you would want to be doing. Oh boy, this is funny. The irony, of course, is that the, the dredge deck is a, opposing a bazaar right now that it desperately wants. Well, he can't. He has no access to it because he's been dredging every turn. So I'm, I'm not sure. He's hoping to just progress and find enough of these like blood gas and Icarids to, to win the game that way before Luis can find a way to interact. But because he's not even trying to find a bazaar, yeah, you know, the clock no. is definitely slow right now. Yeah, I, I, I think he's doing the right play, but he's mm-hmm. certain sure he's envious of the bizarre that Luis has. <laughs> that, All right. Oh, probably another card he doesn't want to play. Probably. Uh, Looking for Cage. More bricks. So do you think he's going to play one of these, uh, like the Ancient Tomb, and cast something, or do you think he's just he's going to wasteland the Riftstone? Port? He's not going to wasteland. Well, he might. That's a, that's a weird thing, right? <laughs> Wastelanding Riftstone Portal. I mean, he has not drawn a card that does anything besides wastelands. Well, he can't. <laughs> he's drawn three thorns, a no rod, which is a net negative, and <laughs> and just <laughs> incredible. Well, he may want to put himself in a position to play the factory just so he can block one of these blood gas. Yeah, I mean he can get down he can get down a metamorph and, and copy an archimy but a block. <laughs> it's a thing. But pretty incredible drawing three cards a turn at this point where Luis yeah. just hasn't drawn anything. Yeah. Not that he could do much. He hasn't drawn like a workshop, hasn't drawn any like mocks or you know, fast man and a solar ring, etc. Well, the Icarus coming back next turn, I assume. So that's going to be that's going to be six damage. So I, I agree with Luis's play. I think you got to dig for the cage, but in the meantime, get a little bit of defense going. Mm-hmm. No argument. Is that is that triple bridge from below in there? Yep. You just hit a bunch of bridges. He has a dread return in this graveyard too, right? Is that just game over? <laughs> yeah, it looks like it is. Oh, boy. There we go. Crazy game. <laughs> Incredible. Well, at least gets to be on the play, which is certainly nice, just to try to get stuff out there. Not that your lock pieces are, are big in this matchup, as opposed to other matchups being on the play, but you do just get that advantage of, of maybe getting a clock out there quickly, maybe finding, uh, I don't know, just not being a turn behind in taking damage. It looks like Luis just has too many cards to sideboard out and not enough to bring in. Well, From what I know, Rod's going to come out. It, you might even consider bringing in the Leyline of Sanctity. I mean, it does stop Cabal Therapy. Well, you'd have to be taking out a literal stun blank. Well, I mean, it's better than Null Rod, right? Yes, it is better than Null Rod, but I mean, is it better than 
Fangawire? Like, I don't think so. I don't see what Chalice... I mean, I guess Chalice at one's pretty good. Yeah. You can get Chalice for four, or... I don't know. <laughs> All right, well, Randy got to keep seven that game. He's not going to... Well, he has a powder, so he might keep seven. Once again, Luis does not have any hate. He, got no, he didn't have much. This is not a matchup he was planning on facing, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Well, you can play a turn one smoke stack. Randy has another serum powder. Unless that's the same no, one. This is, this is a new hand. Okay. Did he mulligan instead of powdering? Or he powdered twice? Did he powder twice? No, he didn't powder twice. I, that might have been a misclick. I think I saw a powder in the second hand. If his hand had, like, which I don't think it did, like, three bridges or something, and you didn't want to exile them, it could make sense, but... So, so Luis, Luis uh, has a ghost quarter and a hand like of This four. hand has Flamekin Zealot. Maybe he doesn't think he can win without Flamekin Zealot. <laughs> well, exile. I, don't know, I don't know about that. Well, he mulligan did. To he mulliganed to four instead of using the powder again. That's this is that's absurd. Odd, what is going on? <laughs> Both players have just given up. I have no idea who's going to win this. Well, it's how to do with the zero powder. <laughs> this, is, this is horrific. Well, Randy's going down to one, but Luis has literal nothing. <laughs> this is the dredge curse continues. <laughs> He's Trouble. not he's not a big dog necessarily. He's a dog. <laughs> but he has he gets to mulligan to one, he could find bizarre. He's know. not mulliganing to one? He's gonna Please? keep the anti artifact card. I don't know. I I think Louise having shop in a in a ghost quarter puts him in a pretty it's the bottom stink weed him. I'm not sure why you wouldn't go to one with this. <laughs> know, right? Luis has to be upset because he's like, Wow, I can't believe he found it on two. <laughs> why why did he hand him two? <laughs> it doesn't make sense. There's a, you know, whatever, like a percentage chance he could have found the bizarre there. <laughs> so Luis is looking for anything. Wow. Oh, wow. That is huge. Well, <laughs> every card in Randy's hand deals with it, but right. he needs a lot of mana to do that. <laughs> All right. That's something. That's great against Randy's hand. Incredible. I'm still not understanding why Randy didn't serum powder. I, I can't see how many cards are in his exile, but well, I'll look he into has one. forty-five cards in his deck and six in his hand, so looks like it's nine. Okay, well, I think he serum powdered at five, and then he serum powdered. No, I think he was, serum powdered a seven, not the second seven, and serum powdered when he had serum powder undiscovered paradise. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's that makes the math work. That doesn't make sense. I believe sense. he chose not to powder when he had Flamekin Zealot. I think that's got to be wrong. Multiple times. I think it's got to be wrong. But, um, wow. So so now Luis has the Ensnaring Bridge, and he's got Crucible, Ghost Quarter, Recursion, and a Sphere. So that's that, all that. That, I think, I think as soon as he empties his hand, that's game, right? There's absolutely nothing Randy can do. Randy will never be able to cast the Serenity or even an Ingot Jewel, right? Yeah. Randy is completely locked out. You certainly <laughs> very close to being locked out. I don't know every card in the list. I can't think of anything. Yeah, unless Randy has an Artifact Accelerant, which he could play Chalice for Zero just to shut that out. There's nothing Randy... There's no answers that Randy has. Or a Spirit Guide, which I'm pretty sure he doesn't have. I'm on board with you. This is in in intensely amusing, despite being uh, also horrible at the same time. <laughs> oh, it's heinous. <laughs> the Dredge Curse. Yeah. I'm curious to know what happens if he uses serum powders. I guess we'll never know. So we get to watch ten turns of the Revoker beat the down before Randy's probably put out of his misery. Hmm. 
What do you name? Abandon Hope. <laughs> so, this was a story that came out of one of the European GPs uh, about a month ago, where a player had out an ent- all the lock pieces on- in the Lantern Control deck in Modern, and he ends up playing Pithing Needle in a game that's essentially completely over and his opponent's not conceding, and he names Abandon Hope. And then players were wondering, is this unsportsmanlike conduct to name Abandon Hope? To later find out, Abandoned Hope is not modern legal, so it was just illegal for him to name it anyway. <laughs> and there's the bizarre to add insult to injury. <laughs> now, at this point, Luis will be able to quickly empty his hand. I mean, this is a hard lock. There's nothing Randy can do. Ghost quarter recursion, unless he has a basic land in his deck. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if there was some way to... No. With the... with Yeah, he just... I guess there is one possibility, which is the... The outs, the outs are that Luis's hand is like Blight Steel Colossus type cards. That's, that he that's just exactly what I was going to say. Yeah, that's... Of course, he can always help deal with that by, for example, tapping shop for three, ghost wastelanding his shop, replaying the shop to generate three more. So he's he's got a little, still really far away from, from being able to pay 13. Pay six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, he'd still be three away. And he's got a, a sphere out, too. So even if his hand was just a bunch of Ulamogs, he'd struggle if Ulamog was an artifact. <laughs> if he have a bunch of Dracos. See, this Lodestone can't even attack, so it's like dagger. Luis using Wasteland just in case there is a basic in his deck. There we All right. go. All right. Hope has been abandoned. It is officially <laughs> over. That was, that was something. We saw some mulligans. We saw many <laughs> mulligans. Dredge? More mulligans. I think more mulligans than turns. Yeah, you know, I mean, Randy, despite not using Serum Powder multiple times in Game 3, still managed to mulligan, I believe, more than seven times that game. <laughs> So that was a fair amount, plus a, at least six in game one, if not more. I, I wasn't counting the serum powders there. So Luis down to four cards, but he, he faced a dredge opponent who had no lands, especially bizarre. So that'll do it. Um, Luis got to even show vote. He got to revoke naming Abandoned Hope. And so I assume that he will be getting penalized. I expect a ban from the DCI, but he got the win. And that's what counts in Vintage Super League. Yeah, Abandoned Hope is definitely Vintage League. That one. Uh, yeah, but it's on, it's on Sportsmanlike Conduct. Uh, I expect a six-month suspension. <laughs> it's probably a good time. He, he could use the cooling off period, and he'll come back strong. <laughs> All right, so our final match is, of course, the showcase. Two best players in the league. Two champions of, of nine rounds of, of round robin who then defeated incredibly tough playoffs. And that would be, of course, Eric Froelich and Steven Menendi. And so... <laughs> That's a that's a really big. I, I, you're all very lucky that you get to watch <laughs> absolute vintage powerhouses play the purest game of magic that there is. It's just it's Christmas Kramer. So that's well, going to be our, our last match of the night. Let's uh, call in the night shift and uh, and then uh, hopefully we'll get a, a great match here. Yeah, hopefully we will not have very many mulligans to one. <laughs> some good magic and. Uh, yeah, stay tuned. Uh, can have some commercials, and then I'm going to face off against Steve Indian for the uh, finale of Vintage Super League, Week 1 in Season 4. <laughs>